Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game, another one. Back at Krusty. I got the cross member modified. Uh, remember, I was talking about cutting the cross member out of it. I got that done, and I got the two frame rails installed. And this clip is now ready to install in Krusty. Stick around. Okay, we're back at Krusty. So I got the front end here now, and my plan is here now is to get this prepped and ready so that the motor fits in it properly. I got clearances for the base pan, and the two front chassis rails are part of this cross member. Uh, if you're not familiar with what this is going on, I just done a video on this here on Krusty. You check it out, it's the video before this. I'll have the link at the end, it'll also be in the description. Uh, what we're doing here now is I got to strip this all down and get this ready to mount the two front rails on it But before I do that, I want to cut this section out for the base pan for clearances and uh, What I did is I picked up a piece of two by two that I'm gonna frame it up I was debating on it. I was gonna make it out of pipe I was playing around with ideas of you know narrower steel and all that type of stuff But no, I just I want some structural strength there. So I'm gonna do it two by two Anything bigger than that will probably be uh, a little bit too big, so I'm going to build it that way. Uh, build the two sections itself out of two by three. I don't think I need to make it out of two by three. It's just really too big, and a lot of it's going to be cut out anyway. So, but that's the plan for that. A lot of people have uh, responded to the last video talking about the front end and the use of this front end. Probably would have been better if I went with a strut setup. Yes. Uh, the problem I've always had with strut setups. I'm a hot rider. Okay. Um, yes, there's beautiful strut setups out there you can buy to put in this here. You pay eight, nine hundred thousand bucks for a strut setup for the front of this car. Um, that's not the way I like building my cars. Someone wants me to come in and install that, fine, I'll do that. When I'm building cars for myself, I've always enjoyed building it out of used parts. That's just what I enjoy. Uh, I'm not one to go out and buy a whole bunch of elaborate uh, modern parts to put together a car. I've, I'm an old school hot rodder. I was just soon go to a junkyard, take parts off cars, and make them work. And this is the reasoning for this. And the reasoning for this also is because I had it here, okay? This was in stock. I've, I've hung on to these front ends over the years because we've used a, lot, used a lot of them in hot rods and stuff like that. And the parts just basically came my way. Like, I have very little or no investment into this other than replacement parts. Ball joints, bushings, that type of stuff. Everything else was a wheel and dealing and, you know, trading off parts and whatnot. So, you know, it's just one of those things. Yes, a strut setup would probably be much better. You'll have more engine clearances. You wouldn't have problem with manifolds and whatnot. That's fine. Uh, another question that was asked was about flipping the manifolds upside down. Uh, one manifold will work upside down, the other one won't. I gotta cut it right up. If you look at the manifolds and the, when they're done, if you flip them upside down, they're pointing straight up in the air, right? And that's the problem I got with that. I don't want to have them stuck up like that. And if you were to cut them, to point them forward, you got a lot of cutting to do. You gotta box all this into that. I don't think it's, it's you know, it won't look the part. It's an idea, yes. I'm still up in the air on that. I'm pretty well heading towards the whole point of making my own log manifolds. It'll be a lot tidier looking. I still want to be able to have access to this and be able to work on it. Uh, if I buy a set of headers and turn them upside down, uh, I'm going to have to re redo all the wires. And then it's just tricky getting at the plugs to check them and stuff like that. I'm just trying to make this easy access, you know, whatnot. But anyway, enough of that. Answered a few questions from the last video. If I think of any more, I'll bring them up. But I'm going to get this all stripped down now and get this ready and mounted up on the bench and uh, get ready to take some measurements. So now, before I went and uh, got into that, I had to take some measurements. So what I did is I mocked the engine up. I knew where the engine sat on this cross member. This here is the center line of the front end, that hole there. There's number one plug or number two plug. So it's one, three, five, whatever. But it's the second plug back. And uh, what I said in the previous video is that I was going to line this up with this hole here, which I got done here now. As you can see, the cross members underneath the pan there now. 
Uh, I went down, I took some measurements off the front of this here, out to the front of the engine, and just the width of the pan, all that type of stuff. I took into consideration that I'm using two by two, and I come up with this here. This is what I come up with. Now, as you can see here, I have a cross member made. There's the mounting holes for the lower control arms. The overall width on the inside would have been 11 inches. Now it's two inches, two inches, it makes a 15, okay? So uh, I, that's the overall width on the outside. Now I start playing around with the lengths from the front of the cross member to the front of the pan, which was seven inches. So in that case, it would have ended up, if I added two inches to that, it would have been nine inches. But I said to myself, like up here in the front, like the, it's, it's pretty high, okay? It'll be pretty high off the pan. So I don't think it'll be an issue getting the pan down out of the car with the pan underneath it. So I decided what I'm going to do there is, because I want to mount the rack to this section as well. I decided to split the difference and go with eight inches. So you can actually see the line that I got here. It, realistically, the front of the pan will pass right through the center of the, uh, the front two by two. The reason for that is, is because this lower pulley, I don't want to have nothing too much underneath that. I like to have everything tucked in behind it, because that's not the pulley belonging to this. I'm putting a shorter pulley on this, the one for the passenger car, because the alternator is a passenger car. Right? And you can see that's a truck pulley, so the pulley will be back farther. So I don't want to have no interferences down in the front of that either. So now that I got that figured out, I got my measurements figured out, I can turn around and take this over on the bench. Now I got some cleaning up to do on this. I'm going to clean it all up and get it ready, and then I'm going to start making the frame. So now that I got it all up on the bench here and all figured out, I got to figure out my game plan of how I'm going to mount this and everything. I got a piece of 2 by 3 here. So this is going to be mounted. You can see this side here got spot well holes in through here, okay, spot well holes. So the two by three is gonna mount like so to that, okay? Now the top section, this top section here now is too short, so I'm gonna cut that off and make up a new plate to come down to that, and I'm also gonna plate it from the two by three down to this cross member and close it in. Up in front here, uh, I was, was talking about it before. I'm going to plate this over and the roll cage is going to mount to this here. So what I'm going to do is chop this off here and chop this off here. I got a bunch, a couple of holes here from brackets and everything. I'm going to weld them up, clean all this up and get that dressed. Uh, the back, I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to drill a few holes in that and I'll plug the weld that from the back side. But that lower tab there, I'm going to remove it. Because I won't have no, no brackets or nothing going to that. I'll just trim that off there and I'll just spot weld it in through there. And then I'll make up a new piece to go from this hat down to the 2x3. And that's basically it. Um, how I'm going to mount that up there. Down here to cross member, you can see where it's going to run through. This here. I'm going to have to figure out some way. I'm going to have to mount this to the bench. Uh, and then permanently mount it so I can cut this off. The bottom of this has a plate on it. There's a plating system on the bottom of it. I'm removing that all together. Because I, it's basically, look, that's all is left is this section here. And once I put a 2x2 two two in there, that'll give it the strength that this here is supposed to be. So I'm going to remove this off it and get clear of that. Um, that's one of the reasons why, like, that's one of the reasons why that you, uh, I did it this way to cut this here. So now I got everything figured out where everything got to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brace this section over here to the bench. I'll just take some random scraps of steel and weld it to the top of the bench so I can cut this clean right off. I'll take my measurements once again from these points, the X measurements, one from there up to this one here and straight across, whatnot. And then I'll have all that measurements to go by before I do this. And I'll make the entire frame to weld to the bench and then fit this into it. So I'm going to go ahead now and clean all this up and get this all dressed up and everything ready to go so we can start cutting it up. So I went ahead and I cleaned up the towers and everything, cut off the tabs that I didn't want. There was a tab here, there was a tab here, there was a tab here. This upper one here, because this is going to be on an angle, it won't come down. So I'll make a triangulated style piece that'll be water on one end of the other that'll I'll weld on here and I'll weld on the upper control arm or the, the upper rail, sorry. I still got drill holes in that here. I have a couple of holes I gotta weld up. Uh, I figure I'm gonna leave that for now. And I went ahead and I measured up, found my centers. The distance here so the distance from here to here is the same and distance from here to here is the same and I ended up with uh, 15 inches between these two marks and so this is the section that's going to be cut out and where the 2x2 two two is going to go so then I started taking measurements I measured up the width of this here across this section here 
and it's just a tad under four inches but I'm just going to add four inches and so that, that's what I got put in here four inches and that cross member there and right here we said that was seven to the middle of the outer section because I wanted to give clear I like I didn't want it sticking out too far and I figured it's down low enough that I can get the pan out of it anyway with just that little one inch there and uh Instead of adding the full two inches, I said I'd knock off one inch and make it eight inches. So the distance from the rail to the outer edge is eight inches and four, we end up with 12 inches, okay? So this is what I gotta make now. I'm gonna make this piece here first. I got this marked and I got these cut up so far and I stopped because I'm not gonna be able to cut this when I weld to the bench because I gotta weld this on top of the bench and uh, reinforce it and reinforce it. it cuts this all out of the way so I can slide that thing in there. Before I does that, I need the bench to make this section here. So I'm gonna get up the two by two now, measure up a bunch of these pieces and cut them out. So I went ahead, I marked out the first piece, measured from the outside corner up 12 inches because that would be the overall length of it. And I just marked it on a 45 degree using just a simple square like that. And what I'll do now is I'll cut that out. Now I got a 45 degree here. I'll build my second piece. And like I won't go up here and mark these out as I'm right now because every time you make a cut, your lengths will change. So I'll cut this piece off. Then I'll do my middle section, which will be this section here. I'll make two 45s. And uh, then I'll be left with one more because I got this piece made. And then I'll make this piece and I'll make this piece with a straight edge on the end of it. So it'll be just basically one, two, three cuts is all I'm going to be making out of this piece of steel. <clears throat> then I'll have my three pieces. So I'm going to get three of them now cut out. Just a quick little note here as I'm cutting it. How I did this first is I cut the outside edge. And then I went over here and I cut my other, other side as well. And uh, I had it so that when it got up to the top, I had two points on either side. Okay, same one on the bottom. Then your first thing you would want to do is take a grinder and grind it across that way. Now, to me, because you're cutting on a 45, your cut should be on a 45, so I'm going to cut this. Now, chop saw, yes, you do uh, the same thing on a chop saw, just take your time. I don't have a chop saw, okay? Uh, and this is the way I get so used to doing everything with a grinder, I just use it for everything. And so this is what you end up with, okay? You have a little small bit of uh, work to do there, not a lot. I gotta V these out anyway. But uh, that's just cut freehand with a angle grinder. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? And I figured I'd just point that out and be very careful when you're cutting through it uh, not to have any weight uh, on this end of it because this will want to close up your gap and then of course it will pinch your uh, blade. So I went ahead and I cut it on this side, this side, Cut the bottom straight across. I got one more cut to make. Now I got the three pieces cut out. I got ahead of myself and I said, oh, stop there. I ended up going around in and fit these so they fit nice, grinding them, dressing them so that they, they were at a 45 and not on an angle like that, over exaggerating it. Then after I had that done, I went and tapered them back. As you can see, I tapered back so that it goes to the middle there and you got some penetration. Then when I went over here and I just picked a random spot on the bench and I welded the first piece onto the bench. Always weld it where you can actually get a grinder in there. Like, don't go coming up here and welding that in that corner. Or in that corner there. Weld it in the middle, on the inside, so you can get the grinder in there to cut it off. And do the same in the bottom. You can turn around and try to piece this together on the bench and do it. I always prefer to weld everything down, solid. Uh, that way everything doesn't move and it, it, it holds its shape a lot better this way. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll weld all this up here and I'll do the same thing over here. So when it cools down, um, I'll then let it go from the table itself. Uh, metal got a tendency to move, and sometimes like when you weld this all together here and then you leave it alone, you'll actually hear cracking and creaking and doing it all because it's fighting itself because we're welded to the bench. Um, so like get it all welded up, let it all cool down, and then basically uh, flip it over and weld the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, 
get this one here all fit in place, put the square around it, get it squared up, get a tack well in place, and then I'm going to start welding this up. So I went ahead and I welded the three sides, in here, this side, this side here, this side, this side here. I let it cool down, and then I cut it from the table, and I flipped it over, and I welded these sides here. What I'll do now is I'll get this here laid aside, and I'll get the cross member up here and get that mounted to the bench. Now I got this here laid up on the bench. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to mount this to the bench. I'm going to weld it on here, put some bracing and everything down here, and weld this solid here. And then I'm going to weld this to this here, and weld that on, get some scrap steel around, and have it so these outer structures here are permanently mounted to the table. Welded in probably four locations so that it don't move. So when I cut the center section out, these are uh, standing on their own. So that way I can slide that piece in there, fit it in place, and uh, start welding that up. So I'm going to go ahead now, I'm going to start setting this up. I'm going to be measuring the angles up. I'm going to weld one side on first, and uh, get it all fitted where I want to, and then I'm going to work on getting the other side set up, make sure that this angle here, the measurements, all that is the same on both sides. So here's what I got done. I got it laid on the bench, and I welded it down here on the bottom here. And over here as well, I weld it to the bench. Now, yes, that is going to be an inside corner there, but it's all I can do. I, I can come at it this way with the grinder to co cut that off. It's a bit tricky. Out here, I'm only coming as far as here, so it doesn't matter, because I'll be tapering this back after the fact. So I welded it there. Then I just turn around and I squared it up from the measurements on these here, going from side to side, and made sure they were square. Then I went and picked up some random scrap pieces of steel, and I welded it to the bench in two locations over here. So this welded to the bench now in four locations and it shouldn't move. Next I went and checked to make sure these upper towers I said they were about two degrees, two close to three degrees that's 2.8 degrees there. Over here we got 2.7 so I think that's close enough. So now I went ahead and I welded the other side of the bench after I got that straightened away with old scrap steel. I don't get fancy with this, make it pretty, make it look pretty. I mean, this is only temporary. So now that that's welded in place, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the center out of it and remove that out of it altogether. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention before we get started. Before I welded this to the bench, I went ahead and I cut up. I cut this section here. And I cut this section here, cut it up, and I've done it on all four corners. I cut it over here as well. So I haven't got to worry about trying to cut that off. So all i got to do now is cut this upper section here, and across top and down the other side, on both sides, and then remove that center section. So you can see, I got center cut out. You see how nice this fits in here now? What I'm going to do here now, these are nice and solid. I'm going to double check, make sure everything hasn't moved here after I cut all this off. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use sections of this to fill in this section here. Because I want this to taper down to finish off to that there, and I want this here to, to be flush on the back side here and just weld it straight around this way here on this, on this front section here and do the same on this side here instead of just plating this over making it look all pieces. I'm going to cut the sections out of this now right in here I'll cut that section out and I'll re-weld that in again I'll take it down the back side so I can use the whole back section here and I'll weld it on through here as well so it'll give me a a bit of a lip and everything, all this back side will be finished off and I'll round it all out and whatnot. Just dress it up. You could have trimmed all that up after the fact, or like now to try to trim it. It's too complicated because this goes straight across. This has got to come on an angle here now. So I figured it'd be just as easy to cut a large section out now and start fitting it back in there again. So I'm going to get this all measured up here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld that to the table as well when it gets in position and I'm going to start welding this on right here as it is. I only got two spots that I can weld it here and in here. So I'm going to get them done and start piecing this all back together. So here's what I come up with. I cut the piece out of the cross member up here as you can see. I cut a section out of here and then I just uh, trimmed it and trimmed it. This originally came straight out this way. Okay. 
and I trimmed it so it went on an angle I'm just trying to uh, flow this in one into the other and what I'm going to do here now I'm just going to tack it around here my whole plan is to have a good weld all the way around here and down the side here but I'm going to weld this here and grind and dress it so it looks like a factory style piece and I'm going to cap the end the same way grind the back off it and then I'm going to taper back this lip here on the back side so uh, that way I can uh, you know it look tidy look instead of a big knob of wells all over the place here I am pretty fussy with it uh, you know it's just I'm just trying to make it look presentable looking there's probably a hundred different ways of doing this a lot faster and uh, I wouldn't say cheaper because all I'm putting into this is time uh, you can go out and buy all the aftermarket kits and make all this up but no where's the fun in that I like hot rod and stuff so I'm gonna go ahead now and weld this on and get that dressed up. I'm pleased with that. Uh, the nice thing about doing it this way is that each time I weld a piece on, I'm actually welding to this here more. So like this is welded across here, this is welded to this piece, this is welded to this piece. This is well to this piece. This is well to this piece. So you know it's uh, it's a lot of strength in this section here to make it all strong, going up around. So I was going to grind it up, and I said no, I'll just leave it like that. That looks pretty good. I'm not going to make more work for myself. So I'm going to go over here now, repeat the same process on this side as I done on this side, and what I'll do is then I'll flip it upside down. When it lets it go off the bench and it's a cool and I'll dress it up. I think I'm going to weld the other lip back into this here and then round it out across here. Extend the lip out just so it flows over some more. And then just uh, turn it off in here somehow. Do the same thing over here after the fact. But uh, yeah, that's basically what the way that's going to look when it's done. And I'll have lots of room there then to work on a base pan. So I'll get the other side done there now. So I went ahead, done the same thing again, cut the piece out. Uh, welded that in and I welded that to the inner side piece there and down through there and then I welded this here to this and this here to this and then welded it all the way around I cut the pieces out of this piece here cut the end out of it the middle out of it to get the ends done and while I was waiting for them to cool I went ahead and I welded up some holes and drilled up these holes here and got these ready for the plating system that's going on them and well over here as well I tidied it all up then I took a bunch of measurements off of this here now, uh, cross measurements from say here, X measurements from here to here, and from here to here, and done the same thing straight across from here, and then took an X measurement here, that type of thing, uh, wrote them down so I got something to go by, because I'm to the point now where this is, I have to let it cool right down, uh, there's nothing warm on this at all now. Have to cool them right off, so I'm going to cut it off the table here now and flip it over and weld up all everything on the inside. Put a little piece in here on the bottom, and that should be done. There it is, all let go. It moved a fraction, if anything, if it might have moved uh, one thirty second of an inch overall going in diagonals. It's just where it just wanted to pull a small bit, but it's not even, everything else is still symmetrical, square, everything that way there. Right. So I got all that done now. I went ahead then and I did some more welding up and grinding up and whatnot on it. And what I got to do next now is I got to... I just flipped over here now. I'm going to get all this here welded up. Get this end piece put in it and same with this side here. Make that look presentable looking. Get all that there welded in there. And then that will be pretty well done. So there it is. The whole thing is completed. I'll walk you through what I've done with it now. Uh, you can see I got the lens put on it and I curved off the edges just so just to give it a finished look uh, on the lower section here and curved that off. So I cut them off the original uh, bottom section and just welded them onto this here. So this all would then be all one piece. And like it's welded in multiple areas all the way around. So there's, you know it gives it lots of strength. Uh, I also welded the tower solid along here uh, on, on the front and the rear. Uh, it's good to, anytime you got seen on an old race car, it was an old pro stock trick back in the 80s. I used to weld up all the seams to give them strength. So like these are already spot welded on, but I welded them solid across here and solid across there. 
Uh, what else did I do? Oh. And all this is welded inside here. All welded down through here, across, up this side on both sides. Right. I went and test fitted a control arm. Uh, some of you might have been wondering about clearances here. I got roughly about a uh, quarter of an inch between the edge of the control arm and here, so there's lots of room. There's no issues there. And then I'll give her a quick clean up inside. But that's basically it uh, for the cross member. So that's the way that'll be now in the car. Um, the biggest thing this here, now this section here, you could have made this out of round tubing or something like this. I want to do this because this is what the rack and pinion is going to mount to right here. So that I can put the rack in the car and up through the car. And the way this will be all rigged up is I haven't got to go pulling the rack out of it. I haven't got to pulling the cross member or something out of it in order to take the base pan out of it. Hopefully I'll never have to take the pan out of it. That's done there now. What I got to do now is I got to set up these two frame rails to put in here because I'm going to make this all one unit welding the frame rails in place plating them up doing everything I got to do with them so it's just a matter of basically taking these frame rails now and running the runners off them to bolt weld them to the body so the front chassis will be like a subframe all one piece so I'm going to get this here ready now and start getting that ready to mount to that Okay, I got one of the rails here. I decided I'm going to put the structural plates on the inside of the rail because when the car, when the rail is mounted on the car, it will have a, an outrigger here, and I don't want the plate there to interfere with mounting it uh, square to the corner of this here. So I'm going to put the diamond plates on the inside. And how I'll go about doing that is, you remember these templates that I had here, okay? That, that was the one that I had made for there. All I did is I figured, okay, I'd like to have it about a quarter of an inch off the edges here. So a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch is a half inch. So this is two and a half. All I did was I measured this over. Measured up two and a half inches parallel to this one and marked the line. I marked over this way here, two and a half inches. I marked the line and then drew it off. Then I went out and instead of cutting that one up, I just basically made this little diamond from that there. Okay. Then when this mounts like so and as welded on it will have a nice little pattern to it right so i'm going to go ahead now and cut four of these out because i'm going to put one there one there and then two on the other rail I had to break down and go out and buy two feet by four feet sheet of one eight because i got nothing here so i picked that up the other day and this is all i'm doing i marked it off two and a half inches i laid that on it and scribed it out and I'll just cut this one out. When I cut this one out, I'll use this one as a template and I'll make four more or three more. So you see me grinding them off, I just cut four of them out, clamped them into the vise, squared up two sides that were close enough, clamped it in and grinded two sides so they're smooth, just used each one as the guide, and then I flipped it over and grinded the other side. Then I went over and laid the two rails down, decided which side I was going to have for the inside, and uh, I went and grinded the welds off so it's nice and flat there. Uh, you should never grind the welds like and leave them like that on a uh, anything that you're going to drag race them with. Uh, NHRA and then play end. All them crowd don't like seeing grind welds. Uh, you, sh you should al always see your finished weld, right? So they can judge the, the welding characteristics on that alone. But uh, you grind these down because I'm putting the gusset plates in there. So all I'm going to do is i got them laid in place there now. 
all I'm going to do is weld around the four sides of them on each one. Same with them there, and they're finished. Then I got the gossip plate put in place. Um, NHRA, I think, wanted that. I haven't seen, looked at the rule book in a long time, but I remember when I was doing this stuff years ago, um, these were needed in the front of the chassis uh, for any kick-ups. I suppose it had to do if you ever done a wheelie and she come down hard, she wouldn't break the frame off. I don't know. But uh, they, they call for gusset plates, and uh, I think they're, they're a good idea anyway, so I'm going to put them in there. I'll get them all set up there now, and I'll get them welded in. There they are, all welded in, still a bit warm, but uh, <clears throat> when you're welding these in, I had two of them on the go here, I didn't like sit down and weld like all the way around it, I welded here, I welded here, I went over done the same thing, and the other one come over here, welded here, welded here, went over done the same thing, back and forth, back and forth, so that I didn't get too much heat into this, right? So I got both of them done here now, I the other one just laid on the floor there, and plates and everything are right inside out there. So now, next thing I have to do now is I got to set them up on the bench, and I got to get two of these parallel, and I got to get them that far apart, and uh, basically have them sort of level and everything. So it's just a matter of sliding this into place and to put to weld it on. This here has to be level with this down here, because this is that cross member. I made this level with the factory cross member, so all that there has got to go. So when I set this up upper section up I'll set it up to be level with that and then it'll just go level throughout the car that way so I'm gonna go ahead now I'm gonna set this up what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set one of these up and just weld it on the bench and then what I'm going to do because um, the problem with this is it's gonna be moving around on you and then I'm gonna bring the other one over and lay it here and then I'm gonna start moving this one around to square up with that one then I'm gonna put a cross member back there a temporary one and another temporary one up here and just make sure that when I make sure X dia diagonals on this frame that they'll be the same. If you ever want to cut a straight line on a round pipe, all you gotta do is take a piece of cardboard with a nice sharp, sharp straight edge on it, you know, the outside edge on the piece of cardboard, and wrap it around it so that the two edges meet again, okay? And square them up and then tape it off and have it just the, the, the diameter of the pipe. Then slide it up to your measurement, mark it with a marker all the way around, slide that away. Cut your piece off. You'll have a straight line going right around the pipe all the way. So there you have it. All I went and done is I welded that on the bench. Okay. Then I turned around and I moved this one over here and I, I clamped angle iron on either end of it. Got the distance. Got them the same, which is 23 inches. Then I turned around and I start squaring it up off the four corners. Uh, much the same as you do building a house. And... Uh, I turned around, I measured up, and I got it so it was perfectly square. Then I went and made cross members, temporary cross members, and I welded this one in here because I don't want the front to move out because that'll be right, that cross member will be right here when it's all said and done, but that's only temporary. And then I put one on the back. I didn't want to go too far back because I'm looking to leave all this in here temporarily until I get all the back made, and I didn't want to interfere with when I wanted to test fit seats or anything like that, or lay anything across straight edge, so all that is built inside the frame rail. I'm not gonna worry about none of that for now and I just gotta tack weld it in there and weld it in across here so there's an X member there and another cross member there. So now the frame rail is situated in the position it's gotta be in. It's level all throughout the whole works of it. Now I gotta mount it to this here. So what I got to do now is I'm gonna bring this up and lay this on the bench. A lot easier to do all this up on the bench. It gets heavier and heavier, I can guarantee you that. And I'm going to set this up and then bring this in and start clamping this into this front end. Now, these two front horns end right at the front of this rail here. So I'm going to use this point and this point and the two back rails to do my X measurements off of. So I'm going to get it up here now and start uh, 
fitting it together. Now starting to look like something. Here's what I went and did. I laid this, the K frame, or I suppose the cross member, on the bench, and I pretty well just squared it up at the bench again, it didn't matter, and I welded it onto the bench, okay? That's my plane. Everything got to be level and parallel to that and whatnot. So then I start fitting this up in place and laying it down. I had different height, I had that stood up on his end and whatnot. And what I was doing, I was checking this angle here and this angle here, getting them parallel, okay? And I got this down as low as it can possibly go on the bottom of the rail. You see it right there. The rail is touching. And uh, I'm going to double check now. I'm going to have to bolt the control arm out to make sure I've got clearances here. And I turn around, I checked it level this way, and I checked it level this way. And I'm totally amazed at how simple that went together. So then I said to myself, well, it can't be square. And I measured from the edge of this hole, which is a factory location, to the corner, and from the chassis rail to this hole here, and it's perfectly square. <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? Because there are the points now that you'd have to go off of, the shock towers. <clears throat> and if you're familiar with uh, frame straightening and all that type of stuff, a lot of it, that's what you, all you end up doing is X measuring everything to get it straight and square and whatnot. So that is where it's got to be. And uh, just walking around with there, starting to look like so, a conglomerate of something. So my plan is here now, I'm just sizing up what way I'm going to mount it and weld it and whatever. I'm going to run a bead in along here, weld it on there. Weld that on there, and then plug weld these two back ones. Then I'm gonna put a plate over this. I was going to put it on an angle, but I want this whole surface here for the the ID I got for an engine mount. So I'm gonna plate this this way here and weld it on solid because I want this here welded to this. So I'll weld this onto this first, and then I'll plate this from here down to here. And I'll weld this here, and then my plan is here is I'm going to build a 1A plate unit that'll come out here and probably turn a bit and come back and go in through here. And this, this is where the roll bar will be mounted to go out to the front, the mounting point. And that'll weld on here. And I'll put a couple of plug welds down through here to catch all this here in the middle. And that, then that's where that'll bolt on. That'll cap the ends of it. On the bottom here, I'll just run uh, little triangulated pieces up here and on the back and cap it in. I'll cap this whole bottom section in coming down this way here. That's what I'm going to end up doing with it to give it lots of strength. But I'm very pleased with it, so I'm, I'm pretty well where I'm to with it. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to test fit that control arm and see how close it is to the frame rail. Because if you remember, that was an issue I had, and I had to drop it 7 eighths of an inch. And I'm not quite sure if I'm there. So uh, I'm going to bolt it on and see how close it is. So I got that mount in place, and it hits right there. Um, I'm here sizing up the measurement that I lowered it down is here now where it should be for the rails to be that height. Um, options I got is to notch the rail here. It doesn't have to be notched that much, all right, as you can see. Or I gotta cut the whole corner out of this where it brings up there. Brings up on the bottom of the rail there and then cut this whole corner out of this here and plate it over so I can drop it down more. Uh, I think I'm going, I, I'm going, if I do that, I'm going to have to drop it down a lot more. Uh, over, it's good. this here distance here would be like an inch and a quarter. And I'd soon keep this rail where it's two now. So I think I'm just going to notch this section here and be done with it. I can also trim off the control arm, but I just, I just don't want to do that. The tubular ones that you get don't have nothing down here and it would, and it would be no issues with it. So I'm going to leave this where it is and I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. And 10 chances one, I'll just notch it. So, I'm happy with everything. I just double checked everything again. Um, I'm just going to go ahead now and start burning this in there. Uh, figure out all I'm going to do over here now is I'm going to notch this back, take a section about this much, and then just move it down and flatten it, just V it off a small bit just so there's clearance there for the control arm. Um, if I go getting into this section down here, I'm throwing everything off again, trying to get everything square and level and stuff like that, and it fits so nice now. The distance here is pretty close to what I lowered it this section before. I know if I have to cut this down here to lower this down, which I'm going to have to lower it about a half an inch more again, 
which will throw off all this measurements back here, everything out of whack. And it'll actually, it'll stick the front end farther up inside the, the suspension, up inside the car more. So my the safe bet is to, like we're talking, if I'm off an eighth of an inch here, that's only an eighth of an inch here. But if I end up notching this and lowering this down a half an inch, um, I'm going to be throwing everything off a big, a uh, lot more than, uh, than I want. So I'm going to live with it and just notch this section here. And I'll be happy with that. Someone someone has suggested about cutting the control arms. I'm not fussy on that. Um, I like just leave stock control arms in it and not have to tamper with them. They get, they're get they reinforced. If I had tubular control arms, um, eventually should probably get them at some time or another. But for now, I'm just running all stock stuff. But I'm going to modify this to fit the stock stuff. So I'm going to go ahead now and start burning all this in. So I got it all let go, taken off the bench. Uh, I went and welded it up here. I welded a section across the front there, welded it down the front here, and over here, and I welded these tabs back here. I have a lot of welding to do inside and underneath, and then I gotta put a gusset here and a gusset here, so I figured it'd be better to take it off. I gotta put the plate on the front. So I got it all set up here. Now I'll just flip it over on the stands here now, so I can work on it easier. And uh, I'm just going to turn around now and start plating everything up and getting everything on this, get this whole front end finished up and weld it up. First thing I'm doing here now is I turn around and I actually weld it up the top edge of that there, weld that to the inner frame, the top lip there. Then I weld it to the uh, actual frame to the actual main structure of the spring tower in here. Then I cut the strip out and that's just a filler piece to put in there. And I'll trim that up and I'll weld it and I'll dress the top and I'll finish the bottom. I'll leave the bottom as a weld. And this is what it looked like when it's done. See where I got it done? I filled it up, I welded up here, I V'd it out, and then I welded it and grind that flush there, and then I ran a bead along here. And I'm gonna leave that just like that. I'm not gonna do nothing with that. So <clears throat> I just figured I'd show you that before if you wonder what I done there. But you can see the way that whole setup is in there. There's heavy plate steel on the top, and then there's a spring tower in the back. Adjustment, so I'm going to weld two of them together there now.
So now I got two of them capped in, and that job is finished. It finishes everything on off. Now next thing I do is I gotta cap these ends. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna build a piece that just fits inside here because I want it to rest on this here, and I want to like I don't want it to overlap. I want it to have it so that there's like a, a a V in the middle there between the two panels, and I can weld that on. Then I'm gonna come over here, and I'm going to. Uh, Weld it across here and down around here. I'm gonna make two plates that are the same, so they look the same. I'll dress both at the same time. I'll drill a couple of holes through here so I can plug weld it onto the edge of this plate here, and uh, it'll actually give strength instead of so there'll be something in the middle of the plate. And so I'm gonna go over. I went over here and then I marked it out. I got my measurements, and uh, I'm gonna cut them out. I'm gonna dress the ends of it. I'll cut two of these pieces out, and then I'll design one side of it so it's got a little bit of a round edge on, just to give it a bit of cosmetic look. So here's what I got made up, and I just rounded out the edges of it to fit on the plate itself, and I got two holes drilled in it to line up with this edge here that I can actually plug weld it to the edge of the 2x3 that's steered in, and then I'll weld it across, and this is where it will fit, like so. As you can see, I can go into there and I can plug weld that here, and I'll plug weld to the edge of the 2x3. I'll weld this right around here solid, and then that'll be the ends of it will be capped, and she'll have two locations to mount the front chassis rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that welded up. So I got three sides of it welded. I'm gonna flip it upside down now to weld the bottom. You can see where the plug welds are too. I grinded them flush before I welded everything else up because I didn't want to disturb another welding in there after the fact. Uh, if you notice, I kept doing the, each weld the same way. I was always pushing the weld on an angle coming in the same direction. You, know, like you can pull it and you can push it. But what I'm trying to do is maintain all my welds the same pattern. So I'm pushing all my welds all the way around us. Uh, I could probably slow down a bit more, but I'm quite content with that. That's a nice enough weld for me. Some fellas wants to roll in nickels and dimes. That's perfect for me. The penetration is there. So I'm going to flip this over now, and uh, I got a bunch of welding to go on the bottom. So I got it all flipped upside down here now, and I went ahead and I welded the bottom of them plates there. I also went ahead and welded the bottom of the rail to the cross member in there on both sides. I got that done. And over here, in here, if you remember the spot well holes, I went and welded all them up on both sides. Over here as well. All the spot wells in there are all done. So now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to make two support plates to go from here up to here. Just make two little plates that will well across here and well across here just to give this here a bit more strength. And then I'll have all the front done. That'll be the front chassis section completed. So I'm going to go figure something out for them. And I hate to tell you, I'm probably going to have you use a piece of cardboard like a template. Ain't that disappointing? <laughs> there they are, the two plates. I made up to fit in that section here. Oh, it's this here. Oh, no. Uh, this pin never saw that. Anyway, there's the two plates. I'm going to uh, rig them up now. Come over here. And. That's going to fit like that. And it's going to weld it on the bottom, a couple of passes. And I'm not going to weld it solid because up here i got a big divot. So I'm going to weld it there and weld it there and I'll do the same on the other end. It's just a, uh, a strength piece that I want to put in from the bottom of this up to this here. And that'll be the last two pieces.
Nothing fancy. Oh, I had to miss the spot there. That's fine, that's perfect. But uh, that's it for that. You won't see that going 70 mile an hour on horseback. But that's it for that frame. The front section is now completed. I gotta do some bit of grinding here, clean this up here, and then I'm gonna put it all back together and set it up on the floor so we can have a really good look at it. There it is, all back together. I just went in, took a quick measurement on my frame rail here. It's the same as on the car, on the rocker panel. So I nailed that one there. Uh, what else? I went ahead and I cleaned up. I took that center bar out. You see me cutting that out. Don't need that there anymore, so I cut it out all together so you can get a visual of everything inside of it then. Got the control arms and everything mocked in place and everything fits and working out fine as kind. Uh, a lot of people have asked about the rack and pinion in this. As you can see, the way the angle this is going here now, this rack is going to be mounted across here. i got to shorten this rack, okay? Uh, we discussed it with a few people, and we figured we can actually knock four inches out of one side of it and uh, bring it in the, the distance, because that's what it is. With Because this is the, the rack and pinion belonged to this front end. I narrowed it four inches, so if I narrowed the rack four inches, the geometry should be on. The uh, few people have asked about it. The trick with all this stuff is right here you got a pivot point, okay? That pivot point there, and out here you got a pivot point. Both of them are supposed to be in the same location, okay? This one's out here now, this one's here. That's two inches out farther, which will give a bump steer. So if you got two of them in line with each other, the geometry will follow through the arc properly, right? And the same one over here. I'm not going to do nothing with this as of yet and for a while yet. I want to get the engine mounted because i got to get the engine mounted to figure out where the steering column goes. When I figure out where the steering column goes, I can start figuring out this rack because by mounting this rack, I don't know if i got to have it on an angle, straight back, whatever like that. So I'm not going to be able to do that till I get the motor mounted and get the steering column in place coming out and get all that figured out. I'm not too hung up on it. I've been down this road before with rack and pinions, so I'll figure something out. Other than that... I had never bothered to notch the rail yet. You can see the way I got this rigged up here now. Uh, it's just temporary. It's, there's no adjustment on it there now. But I'm probably going to uh, cross that bridge when it gets to it. I'm gonna, when I get to the front end close to where I'm happy with it, with the front wheels and everything. And I'll size it up and uh, figure out something. It's just a matter of doing a notch on that and just uh, moving that section in there or trimming off the control arm. I'm not too uh, hung up on it or nothing. It's not going to stop me from moving ahead on the project. I can guarantee you that. But uh, I figured I'd just point that out. I never bothered to notch that yet because I'm just going to leave that for a later date. Next stage on this now is to get this mounted in the car. But before that, i got to get the other rocker panel done. So next video now, I'll be doing the rocker panel on that to get that proper so I can get this mounted in. I want to get this mounted in the car so then I can start working on building the back half of the car. So I'm going to go, be going back and forth now between doing framework and some more metal work on the car. Because i, I got some work around the windows to do. Uh, up on the cowl section got to be done so i'll get at that but uh i hope this one was interesting i know it wasn't uh, it's a bit outside the, the norm of what i do but uh i always enjoy this stuff so anyway i hope the tips were good and until next time <laughs>